Dave the Trimmer. Um, started Dave the Trimmer eight years ago um, after being made redundant. Um, prior to that, though, sort of built it up really slowly, working from um, the mother-in-law's garage at her house because um, I didn't have anywhere to work at, uh, when me and the wife lived together. I didn't have a garage at that house. But, um, yeah, so we worked from that garage. Then we bought a, a three-bed with a garage and did quite a bit of work from that one. Um, but slowly, the work started to really build up, and I started to reduce the hours that I was working with the, co with the company at, where I was employed. And then I was made redundant, um, and I was like, right, now's the time I need to really push this and um, with my redundancy money um, found a unit the next day in fairness and off I went. So, so has it always been interiors that you've, you've wanted to do? Is that, is that, was that part of the, 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 the day job or is it kind of something that kind of just you started to get interested in? How did you go about starting it? So when, when I left school, I always wanted to be in the motor trade. Um, I had uncles that were mechanics and go and see them at the weekends and helping them lose their 10 mil sockets and whatnot. And uh, yeah, always sort of tinkered. And I was like, I want to be, I want to be a mechanic just because my uncles were. And um, went for a few interviews and never, never got a job offer. Don't know what I was doing wrong. But um, went to um, a careers office in Dunstable and up on the boards, there was categories and sections. And uh, in the motor trade section, there was car upholstery. And just purely because it had car in that title, I, I rung, rung that job offer and uh, went down for an interview. And just because I turned up, um, as soon as I walked through the door, the guy was like, right, you've got the job. You're the only man that showed up. <laughs> so I was like, great, when do I start? And he was like, Monday. And... Uh, yeah, I worked for, for Malcolm at Barton and Son in Luton for, it must have been about three or four years. Um, and then I got quite sick of commuting to Luton from Milton Keynes. And um, I know it's not terribly far, but just sitting in traffic all, all the time was quite hard. So a job, a job come up in uh, Aston Martin and I spent two years there, I think, on production. Um, but it just wasn't challenging enough and needed that sort of excitement from doing different jobs every day. So I went back to work for Mount for a little while. Um, and then, yeah, where did I go after that? I went to work for another small independent company near Cranfield. Um, yeah, and then after that started David Trimmer. That, that sounds like that was like <laughs> the best way of getting the, you know, sort of like, well, we start Monday. So did you just naturally get into it? Did you just go, right, actually, I'm just really enjoying this? And how, how did that first kind of experience of it go? Uh, first sort of experience in, uh, in trimming is, is confidence. And yeah, you met, I messed up all the time. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a hard job to do. Um, and with, with with that job, when you mess up, starting again, and you know, luckily Malcolm had quite a lot of patience for me, and uh, it, yeah, he just keep pushing me really. What was the difference between like working like in a you know, a relatively small firm to in in Aston? Was there a big was there a big change in that in the kind of the yeah you know, was it a lot yeah you know, was there a, a, a lot more cars to get done in a short time or how was that? Um, it was because it was production, so you. You were given a, a job. Um, I was on seats on Vanquish, and so you were targeted to trim. I think it was seven seats a day. Um, um, you would. There was machinists there who machined the covers, and we essentially just fitted them. Um, versus proper coach trimming was what, what I'd call it, where you'd start from fresh. You'd start from the leather out on the lay it down on the table, you'd mark out, you would sew it, then you would trim it. So that is where it's a little bit more rewarding over a production type role. Yeah. All right, there we are. There is your caddy. As a, as a sing that was one single line, didn't take the pen off the paper. Uh, so starting up here and then signature down there. That's there is good. the start of your caddy. Very cool. And what's been the kind of 
re well, recent highlights from over the time. You know, what, what's been some of the some of the, the ones that you've you've really enjoyed? Some of the ones we've really enjoyed got the at the top of the list. There's got to be some the DB like four fives, but um, yeah, DB four GTs are just stunning vehicles when you see Ooh. them. I think I'm doing one of those. Are they are they red? Uh, they're, they're all different colours. The one we had in, uh, we've had a couple in. We've had, um, oh, I can't think of the colour. It's a really nice racing sort of green. Um, not dark green, but a, a nice green. Um, we've had a silver birch one in. Um, but yeah, they, they're beautiful cars. So so in terms of the, 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 the Cali, yeah, was, this an, was this an ongoing project? Was this, was this something that you kind of started and you just tweaked it as you got along? Um, the Caddy is, is a vehicle I've always wanted to own. I've, I've looked at buying them in the past um, and never really found the right one. But this one came up on Instagram. One of a friends of a friends that I follow um, put it up and I immediately got in touch with him. So I knew about the truck anyway, um, knew how good it was. It was a base project um, and bought it the next day pretty much. Um, but it needed some love. But it wasn't a bad start, um, and as a project, we turn turn it around within sort of sixteen months, really, start to finish from colour change, retrim, engine swap. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's come a long way. So, what what, what colour was it when it when it when it began? Original. It was a it was a white pickup, right? Um, and the, the colour it is now is like a cappuccino beige and. That all rolled from the the interior ideas um, and, the, and the interior colours that sort of yeah just materialised from like the, the the when I bought the materials in I was like right that's the colour it needs to go because it just works. It is really really nice colour. So how how when you when you get a car in or or what's, you know, somebody do do you work how do you work with the client to make make the kind of the reality you know, you know do you kind of go right you sit down and go right what what do you want how yeah how do you go about sourcing materials and making the cars so yeah in most circumstances we'll have the client in we'll spend as long as needed going through i've got hundreds and hundreds of samples that we we show them um i take notes and write it down on the job card and just a lot of the time they ask me what do i think which is it's nice, but my, <laughs> my taste is not always to everyone's taste. And I, I try to steer them into a, you know, it is your car. You should really be making this decision. But a lot of the time they do ask for my guidance, which is cool. Um, we've got quite an eye for it. We, 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 I know what works in a, in a car. and um, But, yeah, we do try to help them out a little bit. The so how, how did, when, you, when, you, when you wanted to go with the interior in this one, how mm -hmm. did you go about it? We were like, right, I want... I want the exterior to go with the yeah. What was what was the thought process? So I managed to get hold of some of the um, the leather weave that are seen in um, the Singapore Porsches, um, wow. and that's that had a four colorway: um, white, orange, brown, and tan, or this cappuccino color. Um, so I've got enough to do this interior, and that then paved the way for everything else. So one of the browns that are in that in in that weave. We've selected a, an Alcantara as close to that as possible, so that's where the whole theme of the brown and the leather weave with a brown stitch just keep keeping things toned and classy in there. Um, yes, yeah, brown, brown everywhere essentially, apart from the leather weave. Um, but yeah, but a cool brown, not like a <laughs> not like a mucky brown. It's it's it's, it's, uh, a, cool... it's, it's a real deep chocolate brown. Uh, yeah. Alcantara, yeah, it's, and it's everywhere from headlining to dash, you name it, rear bulkhead, it's all trimmed. Yeah, no, it, it looks, it looks amazing, mate. It looks, uh, it looks, uh, uh, yeah. You know, like I say, you, you brought it up a few times over to, up to the Dub Club, and it's always one that's kind of stuck out and been like that. It just looks, yeah. Really, yeah, it's really nicely done. Yeah, yeah, it it does stand out. Um, and it's credit to all the other people that have helped along the way, like the paint shop and um, friends who've helped me put the engine in as well. Do you know, it just really does stick out as a good truck. 
So, so what what engines in it? What 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 what's running underneath it? It's uh, I bought the donor vehicles an Audi A3. I bought um, and that had a one eight turbo twenty valve in it. Right. Um, stock. I think they're one eighty brake. I, I don't know what it's running at the minute, but it's it's certainly over two hundred and twenty horsepower, maybe more. Um, so, I presume it's a pretty light vehicle as well. So yeah, I guess it's uh, it doesn't hang about. It's incredibly light, and it yeah, it doesn't hang about. Um, been on a few driving trips with friends, and they and they just can't believe how quick the thing goes. <laughs> bit of a bit of a sleeper. It, yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So what's what what projects are on at the moment, and what what you've been working over the last few weeks? So, I, mean, I presume you've been you know, being able to get into the workshop to to get on with get on with yeah something. yeah. We're back to work now, not full team, but we're back to work. Um, current big project we got on at the minute is a um, Porsche 964 Turbo S flat nose. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, and incredible car. Beautiful. Um, and someone's, yeah, cherished it. Had the engine built to 850 horsepower. Um, now we're putting in the interior. It deserves full leather. Um, like, yeah, it's, it's pretty full on. Um, Full lightweight carpet set and just dripping in leather. Wow. So I mean, so I mean, times. I, I guess it's just down to getting the materials to do that, and you you're just you know working away you know, through it. Yeah. So because of the whole lockdown COVID thing, um, I did a bit of panic buying, thinking, Christ, we've got all these cars here, and if everything does lock down, a lot of my suppliers are from Europe. Um, yeah. And I was worried about materials coming in. So, yeah, I spent a few days really forward planning and getting in materials as fast as I could before it fully locked down. And um, I, it paid dividend, really, because, yeah, we're still up, able to operate. Haven't had to worry about getting any materials in at all for any of the cars. So other than the Porsche, what else is it? What else, oh, is... What else have we got in? So uh, we've very nearly finished the DB5 um, Aston Martin retrim. Got a couple of more bits to do on that then yeah once we finish that rolling on to a Aston Martin V8 uh, Volante X-Pack um, monster car they always have so much presence on the road those things yeah um, is that all the, the big the big haunchy bonnet to it yeah you, you've got it yeah the big um, bonnet bulge on it yeah, yeah. so have, have you got involved in like some of the Kind of the show, you do some some show cars as well. You, you work with various companies to, to kind of get you know, get the interiors done for show cars. Yeah, we've done a few in the past. Um, one of the, one of the big ones that we did a few years ago was for um, Maguire's UK. Did their um, police interceptor. I don't know if you've seen that. I'll check that out. Um, but yeah, that was a mammoth task because um, because most American vehicles are so big, aren't they? Um, but this was just uh, the requirements were that everything needed to be trimmed in leather. We um, it had two single seats up front, and we tagged them together to make it like a large bench seat going across. Um, yeah, that was quite a cool project. Um, another show vehicle that springs to mind is uh, the newer style caddy vans. Um, did, did a blue it was a blue exterior with full Alcantara interior running Porsche seats and um, dash modifications um, yeah like I think it's like 400 brake horsepower two litre turbo in that thing that was that's a cool van <laughs> so hopefully you can see see your see your your truck uh, do you call it a van or a truck what's uh, what's what, what, what I, do you, I what, call it a truck uh, yeah pickup truck truck yeah. yeah, or um, my daughter's called it Daddy's Caddy. Nice. Yeah. 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 When, yeah. when I had the door signed written, had the guy um, hand paint the inside of the petrol flap Daddy's Caddy for him. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, just, yeah. Girls love it. They fight over who's coming out for, the, for a drive in it. It's great. Well, I guess you've only got one seat, haven't you? If you've got two one kids, seat, yeah. 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 It's, uh, who, who, who are you going to take out today? Um, today, I don't think we'll go out in it today. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, I took them out last weekend, didn't it? Um, first time I've been out in it this year. Um, 
yeah, they they love it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I was saying this with Matt Mees, it's, it's just such a shame. The weather's been glorious. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just been so frustrating. It's just been like, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, like last weekend, I think it was meant to be a, a car show over at Aylesbury that I'd booked in to have a trade stand there and show off the caddy and, and frustratingly cancelled. But yeah, the weather was perfect for a car show. <laughs> right. So, I won't keep them much longer. There we are. So, hopefully. Uh, da -da -da. Thank you so much, mate, for joining me. And no, thanks, thanks for the invite. So where, I really where, appreciate it. And it's a um, big break talking. So where, where, in terms of where people can find you, David Trimmer on Instagram, that's on Facebook as well, and on Twitter, or just Facebook and Instagram? Uh, just Facebook and Insta, yeah. I've tried Twitter. I can't get my head around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a funny old world, Twitter. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, right. There is... Your caddy. Look at that. There we are. That's very cool. There you are. Your caddy as a continuous car drawing. That is amazing. Good work. So that'll be number three, three, yeah, sorry, three, four, two in the book. And I'll get that and be off to the printers next week to be scanned and then we can we can have a, a catch up about Getting, I think on, on t shirts and stuff that'll look wicked, so yeah, that is so cool. But thank you so much, mate, for joining me, really, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, catch you at a car event at some point in the future. Uh, yeah, 100%. Hopefully, um, yeah, be the first dub club that's open, I'll be there. Awesome, well, uh, looking forward to it. And uh, as I say, we'll be, I'll be in touch about the uh, the, the, the Shovitz event as well. Nice one, cheers, yeah. Cheers, buddy. Take care, thanks, mate. Bye. Cheers. Bye.